All right, artists, we are going to start painting our expressionist, fauvist style paintings, really focusing on color and color schemes used throughout, throughout our painting. We are also going to focus on expressionist techniques. So you can see my example here. Um, it is a scissors. There's blues and blue greens. So it's not traditional looking, it's very colorful and bright. As I get started, let me tuck my example away. You will want to have out your color wheel as you're deciding your color schemes. You'll want that handy. And you will want the expressionist technique sheet that we did together. Uh, because looking at this, I already know some techniques that I want to use and try in my painting. Once you have your composition of your object drawn on this paper, you want to flip it over. And many of you have already completed this, but on the back you want to put your name, and then you want to label your color schemes that you are using. And so I know in my background, I want yellow, yellow, green, green. I don't think I'm going to put blue, green. That's analogous. Because when I find them on my color wheel, they are next to each other. Yellow, yellow, green, green. And then I know I want to use for my scissors violet, red violet, blue violet. And so I have violet, red violet, blue violet. I'm going to use monochromatic, which means I'm going to use white and black to get the values of probably violet. And then also I'm using yellow, I'm using violet, that's complementary yellow with blue violet and red violet is split complementary so i actually have a lot of color schemes going on once i kind of figure that out and wrote it you know i have it written on the back what i did before i started painting i took a pencil and i kind of labeled where i'm going to put these colors so i have yellow yellow green green i'm not going to use the blue green anymore for my scissors, I'm going to have violet, and I'm going to make both handles violet. One of the blades blue violet, the other one red violet. And then with this scissors, I kind of flipped it. I'm going to have a blue violet handle, a red violet handle, and then these little pieces of the blades are going to be violet. Labeling my painting like this will just help me to remember as I start painting. Then, once you have your composition drawn, you have it labeled, you are ready to start painting the background. You want to leave your object for the very end. So for my background, I just needed my cool blue, my yellow, and white. So I'm going to mix green. I have a dirty water cup, but it's going to work. I have my green brush out of my kit and my red brush out of my kit. These should both work, but if you are creating and painting something really small, um, just ask me or Ms. Buckles or Ms. Holinka for a smaller paintbrush because we have them and we can find them for you. Okay, now as I start painting, I know for my background, I either I kind of really want to do this like impasto, like this really textured, or I like the energetic brush strokes. I think I'm going to do this impasto in the background. And then I'm just going to get, get started. Pasto is really thick. I also want to do like some mixing. I have to be careful kind of going around my object 
So I'm going to get as close as I can to my object without painting the object itself. This is why it's good to do the background first. you can see I have my background done at least the first layer uh, there's some spots like right along this edge that look too smooth for me not really in pasto maybe in here um, so I'll let it dry a little bit and then I'll probably come back in with some color and add another layer and just make sure I have like the texture the way that I want it. You can also see that I got the negative spaces of my scissors. So where my, you know, your fingers would go through here. That's part of my background. And so I wanted to make sure that I got those. You can also see I made mistakes. Some of my paint is coming on to my scissors. That's okay, I'll let it dry and then I'll paint my violet on top of it. It should be easily fixed. I also just want to make sure this is the color scheme. I have the analogous colors and as I look at it, I definitely do. I have yellow, yellow green, green. I even have some blue green in here. So that is totally, totally fine. I also have values of each of these colors because I used a lot of white. I could have um, added some black in there if I would have wanted to. I just, I just didn't prefer that. And so now, if you have your background done, you want to let it dry completely before you start to paint in the rest of your object. If I don't wait for it to dry, there's a good chance my violet is going to mix in with my yellow and my green, and I'm going to get some neutral colors that I don't want. So you can let this dry at your table. You can let it, you can put it on the drying rack for 10, 15 minutes. This will dry pretty quickly. All right, I am now ready to start painting my object, my scissors. The background is mostly dry. There's just a few, so I'm gonna be pretty careful. I'm switching over to violet. So I got the warm blue, red, and I'm gonna try to use up my white here. Now, depending on what technique you're using, that'll depend on if you want to mix your color beforehand, if you want it to mix on the paper. My background technique is very um, wild, chaotic, not as thoughtful, and so I want to be a little more thoughtful with my violets. So I'm actually going to mix on my paper here. So remember violet is red and blue. I want to make sure I have a true violet, not like a red violet or blue violet yet. And that looks pretty true. And I'm going to start painting. And I think with this one, I know I'm going to use Scraffito at some point. I'm just not sure where. But I think I might do some more gesture, some layering, maybe some energetic brush strokes. I've also switched to my red brush. I just feel like that's going to help me 
um, get these lines better. And this is where, you know, painting my object, I'm going to probably paint over my impasto. Just kind of clean up my lines a little bit. Right now I just have one color, it's not super exciting yet, but it'll get there. Alright, now, let's do like the double loaded brush, get a little white, a little purple. Now I can kind of come in, doing that wet on wet. And this is where I'll add probably a bunch of layers. This part of the scissors is also going to be violet. And so that, I'm actually just going to dip into my white right away. I want it to be maybe a little bit lighter of a violet. Kind of have that double loaded brush going again. You can see I have finished my painting. It is very expressionist. You can see a lot of my brush strokes. Remember I had impasto in the back. I did a little scraffito just on these two blades, some scraping away of the paint. And then I did layering, energetic brush strokes. I am done for today. I'm going to let it dry because once this dries, my paint will look different. It dries a little bit darker. And then um, depending on how much time you have left in class, you can check this out once it dries, or you can check it out tomorrow. And you might see like, oh, I wanna add a little bit more lighter vibe here, or I wanna touch up around the edges. But this is expressionist, so if your edges are not perfect, that's fine. It's okay to be a little messy with this technique. Again, once you're done, drying rack, please wash your brush, empty your water cup. If you have any extra paint, like I have a lot of blue and red, and I know I'm not going to use it, see if anyone at your table or the table next to you could use up this paint so it doesn't go to waste. Um, and 
you you're done you did a great job